Hey guys, it's OSG here, and this time we are looking at the worst Amiga games ever made. These games were notoriously bad, and they scored really low in some of the great magazines of the time. I tried to use Amiga Power as much as I could, but when there was no review available, I used a host of other great magazines like Zap, Amiga Format, and Amiga Joker. So let's take a look at the games that left us feeling violated after we spent our pocket money on them. In 25th place is Fat Man the Cape Crusader. Now this is one that I did have, and to be honest, I didn't think it was that bad at the time. But that was because I was in my early teens when burping and farting are the funniest things ever. Looking at it now, I realise why Omega Power only give it 66%. 24th place goes to Steger, and this one is like something that a first year developer would turn out as a project. It's obviously an attempt at replicating a silkworm type game, but it fails in every aspect. Turbo shoot em up that only scored 60% in Omega Joker. 3 Beasley's International Football takes 23rd place. This is the first of three football games on the list, and FIFA it is not. This really reminds me of the Harry Enfield sketch where all the players chase the ball. No wonder Zap only scored at 47%. In 22nd place is Fire and Forget. Now this can only be described as a road blasters wannabe, and unfortunately, it's not very good. While on first sight it looks okay, it's totally boring and repetitive. So boring, Zap only scored at 47%. 21st place goes to Captain Planet. Again, like with Fat Man, I didn't think this was too bad. The game is nice looking, but the gameplay is terrible, and that's why it only scored 43% in Omega Power. 20th place with a substandard score of 40% in Omega Power. It's a car game with crappy old trucks that has no sense of speed or handling. One of the worst car games I have ever played. 19th place is Fears. This Doom clone only mustered 40% in Omega Power, and although some of the other magazines scored it higher, the game just doesn't live up to what it was copying. The movement is choppy, and the graphics are very pixelated. 18th place goes to Allo Allo. Now I liked Allo Allo the TV programme, who thought it would be a good idea to make a game of it, because it wasn't a good idea, and the results were 37% in Omega Power. 's of Thunder takes 17th place, and this game is hated by most, if not all, Omega fans. We were lured in with what looked like a promising looking game, only to be met with the worst gameplay so far on the list. Omega Joker thought so too, and only scored it 35%. In 16th place is the second football game on the list, and it's Graham Sooner's Vector Soccer. 
Look at this. I mean, what the hell were they thinking of? It's like hard driving meets pro evolution soccer. Abysmal, and it only scored 32% in Amiga power. Fifteen players goes to dangerous streets, and this is a great looking game and concept, let down by piss poor gameplay and sound effects. I actually remember buying this and feeling so ripped off, I wish I'd read the review in Amiga Joker and only scored it 32%. Dick Tracy takes 14th place, and you could be mistaken for thinking this is an early GTA game, but looks are all it has in common. The car movement is woeful, with a turning circle made up from 8 sprites resulting in next to no control. Amiga Joker scored this amazingly, 31%. In 13th place is Terminator 2 Judgment Day, and this game was massive back in the day, off the back of the movie, but it was a total letdown. While it's not looking bad, it was another game that suffered from poor gameplay, resulting in a 30% score in Amiga Power. Twelfth place goes to buy on a commando, and this is a lesson how to take a great arcade game and totally destroy it. Amiga was renowned for having some great platform games, and buy on a commando should have been straightforward port. Unfortunately, not, and only scored 30% in Amiga power. Dennis takes 11th place. It's a platform game again, but maybe one of the most boring I've ever played. Music is rubbish, and for some reason, Dennis seems to turn into an old man from the side. Amiga Format gave us a substandard 25%. In 10th place is Akiva. This game is based on the manga series which was great. Unfortunately for us though, this is rated one of the worst Amiga games ever and only scored 16% in Amiga power, which I think was generous. Ninth place goes to Pinball Mania. Hey, it's a pinball game, and the Amiga had some great ones like Pinball Fantasies and Pinball Dreams. What could go wrong? Well, everything it would seem, as this is about as far away from those games as you could get. The guys from Amiga Power weren't impressed either, and only scored it 11%. Yolanda takes 11th place. A sexy woman jumping from platform to platform to get the doors, what more could you want? Oh, some good music and at least an ounce of playability would have been nice too. I mean, what is this crap? Amiga Joker giving a measly 10%. In 7th place is Battletoads, and this is a game that was good on all other platforms apart from the Amiga. Crap graphics, crap gameplay and scrolling that is only slightly better than flip screen scrolling. Got this game a score of 9% in Amiga power.
Sixth place goes to Street Fighter. Now to be honest I wasn't a fan of the first Street Fighter even on arcade because it was slow and jerky but the Amiga version takes this game to a whole new low. A truly horrible game that only scored 9% in Amiga power. The monstrosity known as Outrun takes 5th place. This is a game that upset so many kids back in the day. It's slow, sounds appalling and the control is like nothing on this planet and Amiga Power scored this a lower than low 5%. In 4th place is Huckleberry Hound, now a friend of mine actually developed this game under another name. The game wasn't even good in the first place so I have no idea why it was taken and reskinned into this pile of crap. We still make fun of him about this game today, Omega Power scored it 5%. Third place goes to Rise of the Robots and this is a masterclass of trickery. Before YouTube and the internet, we the consumers had to go on box screenshots and the screenshots on this game were special to say the least. Unfortunately, that's all it had going for it. The gameplay was terrible, maybe the worst fighting game of all time and only scored 5% in Omega Power. Fourth and Inches takes second place, and to be honest, I'm not an American football game lover, but I can get away with John Madden, etc. However, this game is just a steaming pile of crap and is no fun at all to play. Omega Power only scored it 3%. Now, for the lowest score ever recorded in Omega Power and that's for Kickoff 96. Now I know some people are going to say I like Kickoff and Kickoff 2, but go and play Kickoff 96 and you will see why this game only scored 1% in Omega Power. Ok that's it for me, please like and subscribe if you like my stuff, and let me know in the comments below what your worst Omega games were. Until next time, this is OSG, signing out.